We finished this week with a practice problem that will tie together both the IS curve and the MP curve. So the first part tells, asks us to derive an expression for both the IS curve and the MP curve, and that's based off of these data. So we know that for the IS curve, right, we know that's y equals at 1 over 1 minus MPC, and this is something you need to make sure you know, times C bar, I bar, G bar, and X bar, that's my autonomous uh, expenditure, minus MPC times T bar, minus D times F bar, minus, we know that the IS curve is downward sloping, so there must be a minus sign, and then you have the C plus D plus X, those are all of our response variables, divided by 1 minus MPC, and that's going to be times R. Now what we do is we plug all that information in, right? We have 1 over 1 minus 0.6 is 0.4. We have C, I, G, and NX is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we know that that part is 8, right? So from here to here, that's 8. Minus MPC times uh, T, so that's 0.6 times 3, which is 1.8. And then minus D times F bar, so this would be 0.4 times 1.2, and so that would be 0.48, minus, we have C plus D plus X on top, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, that's 1.1, divided by 0.4 times R. Now I want to clean this up, I want to plug some of this stuff into our calculator, so we know that's 8 minus 1.8 minus 0.48, and that's going to be times 2.5, because 1 over 0.4 is 2.5. We'll get 14.3 minus, and then this is 1.1 divided by 0.4 equals, this is going to be 2.75 times R. So this right here is our IS equation. The next thing we want to do is our MP equation. That is actually quite simple. It's R equals R bar plus lambda times pi. Well, that's just given to us. R bar is 1.5 and lambda is 0.75. So we have our MP equation. Now, just so we remember, remember my IS function is, is Y as a function of R, which is what we see. And the MP curve is R as a function of pi, which is what we see. So now we have the two of those, and we can finish this problem. Let's go ahead and bring this up just a little bit so we have more time. You can always pause this and go back if you, if you need, to, need to see any of those numbers. What's given to you in the practice problem is that the real interest rate is equal to 2%. Remember, in this model, we're just going to plug in the number 2 for this, so that way we can figure all this stuff out. So output, then, is equal to 14.3 minus 2.75 times 2. So that means output is equal to 14.3 minus 5.5. We plug that into our calculator. 14.3 minus 5.5 equals, it tells us that my output in this model is equal to 8.8. .8. We also have been asked to find the inflation rate. Well, now we use the IS curve, right? We know that R is equal to 1.5 plus 0 0.75 times pi. So we plug this in, 2 equals 1.5 plus 0 0.75 pi. We subtract 1.5 from both sides. We get 0 0.5 equals 0 0.75 times pi. So inflation rate here is going to be 0.5 divided by 0 0.75. We're going to plug that into our calculator, 0.5 divided by 0.75, and that's going to equal 0.67%. That's going to be our level of inflation. So given the interest rate of 2%, we were able to find output and inflation in this model. Now remember, next week we're going to start learning about aggregate demand aggregate supply where you'll have to actually solve out for the interest rate, but for this week you're going to be just given the interest rate. Let's go ahead and move this up so that way we can 
uh, show what this is going to look like if I have these values. So I'll go ahead and draw our basic ISMP model, right? So we have two different axes here next to each other. We have the IS curve over on the right hand side. Here's my IS curve. So I know that's output versus the real interest rate and the MP curve, which is upward sloping. We have the uh, MP curve is the real interest rate and then inflation down on the horizontal axis. And there's some point, but it doesn't matter what the point is. We're just gonna make this point A. And so we know that the real interest rate was two. That's what was given to us. Remember next week, we will not have it given to us. We'll actually calculate it out. Let's say this is A, all right, this is my MP curve. I forgot to label, make sure you're labeling. This would be my inflation rate 0 0.67. This would be my output 8.8. .8. So that's what we're looking at when we're saying, uh, here's an inflation rate, uh, or I guess in this case, here's a real interest rate. What is the inflation rate or the output? So you could ask it any other way, right? I could have given you the inflation rate and asked you for output and the real interest rate. I could give you output and say, what would have the real interest rate and inflation rate been? But either way, this is a, uh, a practice problem. This is an example problem of everything that we've covered this week.